Big plays! Oh, big plays! Now, Hawaii Football Weekly on ESPNHonolulu.com and the Sideline Hawaii app. Here's Hunter Hughes and Mark Veneri. Aloha and welcome to another edition of Hawaii Football Weekly. Uh, the Bows 2-1 and one on the season as they head to San Diego State uh, to take on the Aztecs. Aloha everyone, I'm Mark Veneri. Of course, my co-host and partner in crime for Hawaii Football Weekly, Hunter Hughes. Hunter, um, it's great to be back, of course, uh, this week talking about um, Hawaii football as we always do. But more importantly, talking about a big W uh, this week for the Bows. And, and it was really nice uh, to see our University of Hawaii program um, back in the win column this weekend and uh, definitely see and what we were calling for. We were calling yeah. for it. We wanted the passing game. And we saw a career performance out of Chevy Cordero with over 400 yards passing against New Mexico. That's right, man. I, I'm just so excited that we turned things around after uh, things not looking good last week after that loss at Wyoming. Um, got the boys back on the island, got some well-needed rest, I'm sure. And, um, you know, it, it was not a blowout at all. Um, I felt like this game against New Mexico was well fought. I thought our team showed a lot of heart. Um, but you're, you're exactly right. I, I think, you know, other than the, the two um, – to be honest, two of the worst throws I've, I've seen Chevin make. Um, he played absolutely phenomenal. If, if I can uh, trailer that comment with that, I, I just, I think he, you know, threw the ball fantastically and it shows um, the, the type of trust that coach Graham has in this quarterback to allow him to, to have 43 attempts. And that was the thing we were talking about last week was these guys were recruited to throw and catch the football. So let them do what they um, are, are recruited to do. And, um, I mean, he spread the ball around like crazy and, uh, and we get the W for it. What, what do you think about that, Mark? Well, I definitely think, uh, the, the things that we were talking about Hunter, uh, last week, uh, with the attempts, uh, against Wyoming was at about 20 to 25 range. I think you and I both called for, uh, the 35 to 40 range uh, for Chevin, which he did. Uh, and he accomplished that. And what what really stood out to me, uh, Hunter, in this football game, and we will get to the defensive side, of course, but on the offensive side of the ball, uh, that really, really impressed me personally it was nine different receivers touching the ball. Uh, so there right. was a lot of guys uh, spreading the wealth uh, or getting the wealth and Shevin spreading the wealth. Uh, but more importantly, we talked about this too, was – the rhythm throws, the easy quick hitches, the easy bubble screens, the easy right. slants, the easy ten and five ten and outs that got Shevin in a rhythm. And we saw this. We saw this happen when they had the short completions and they got those rhythm throws. It opened up the deep ball. We saw Bowens. We saw Marner. We saw Calvin Turner. And that really opened things up offensively in the passing game for the Bows this past weekend. That's, that's right. And the only way that happens is with um, the offensive line stepping up. I mean, uh, that, that big ball to, uh, um, to Zion Bowens, uh, Shevin took a good four seconds, maybe even five, with that, that fake uh, reverse handoff um, before he finally let it rip. And the only way you have enough time to pull off a play like that is if the offensive line is, is covering their assignments. Other than the passing, and what we called for the most in last week's episode was we need our offensive line to rise up and, and be the leaders of our team that we know that they are, um, they kind of have aged into. Um, and so, yeah, I, I thought they did a fantastic job. And, you know, that throw to Zion Bowens, I don't know if, you know, you measured it out, but that was easily 60 yards in the air, potentially even, you know, 65, 67, if Zion doesn't jump up and, and catch that ball in the back of the end zone. Um, just an absolute rocket from Shevin. Um, but, yeah, a, a terrific day on offense. Um, I don't know about you, but I thought our defense uh, looked a little uh, unsure of themselves at the beginning. I think it was just getting, you know, I would say uh, getting comfortable um, for me yeah. personally. Uh, you know, when you're seeing a different attack, and, and remember, we talked about New Mexico being that uh, the triple option. We didn't see the triple option. We didn't see the option attack. Uh, we saw uh, Tavaka Tuioti uh, spreading the wealth, 
uh, as well, throwing the ball, getting the, the, the running back out of the backfield, getting some looks. And uh, typically we're used to seeing that uh, read option type of look. Uh, we saw a little bit with it uh, with New Mexico, but we're used to seeing that triple option attack. Um, but New Mexico was spreading, uh, spreading the football out. So um, I think there was adjustments to be made and, you know, give credit because in after, um, you know, the, the first half of play with the 21 points, the defense really stood up. And, you know, through three Absolutely. quarters, it looked, it looked fantastic. Uh, you know, adjustments to me is one of the most important things and underrated things in football. It's how these coaches – and it's not so much the players. It's what these coaches get paid for. And the coaches get paid for to do and make the right adjustments uh, throughout the game. And I thought Coach Graham, Victor Santa Cruz, uh, Jacob Yoro, along with Abraham Elamimi and the rest of the defensive staff, I thought they did fantastic and making the right and key adjustments uh, in that ball game. I couldn't agree anymore. I, you're not measured by, you know, the first quarter, the first possession, the first big score. Thank, you know, thank God for that. I mean, you're, you're judged by how you finish the ball game. And I thought our boys showed tremendous heart, um, tremendous uh, perseverance. And, you know, certain guys on the defense had career days on, uh, on Saturday. Um, you know, one, one in particular, uh, Quentin Frazier just went absolutely crazy with, um, uh, nine total tackles, six solos. And I don't know about you, Mark, but th that interception by him was one of the most impressive catches I I've ever seen from, um, from a college player who, you know, not too long ago was playing division two, you know, at, um, at, uh, th that, that school in California. Azusa Pacific. I mean, yeah. That's right. Azusa Azusa Pacific. Azusa Pacific. So, you know, getting the opportunity that he has to come up to the Division One level, uh, Coach Graham was talking about that recruiting uh, decision from a coaching staff just a couple days ago. Um, it, it just shows the, the kind of uh, talent that this kid has and the ability to rise up uh, when the moment calls for it. And, and we'll definitely be uh, – we kind of teased it, I guess you could say, who – uh, maybe our player of the game. There was a lot of players that stood out. Um, one of the things that we also called out for uh, in this game was the pressure from the defensive line. Uh, we saw that um, uh, we saw that there was a lot more pressure up front. Uh, we saw that there was a couple of sacks as well, Hunter. And we called for that, mm -hmm. the pressure. I always like, look, uh, maybe in physical stature, we don't have the biggest defense, uh, but we have a very uh, fast defense that – is not afraid to come downhill and play. Uh, I think sometimes there's some uh, a little bit of overaggression defensively in which gets us caught. Mm -hmm. I think that caught us off guard um, in the first quarter. But for me, Hunter, uh, the one thing uh, the one thing that really stood out to me is key plays, key plays in big moments, and making big moments count in key stops. I, I think when you have that and you have the ability to rely on a defense that will not give up because this defense has shown its resiliency through three games. We, we know this about our defense, is that they're going to give the opportunity to our offense to win a game um, in key right. moments. So I really enjoyed the fact that there was more pressure. And, you know, once again, Darius Musau playing a fantastic game. You had Absolutely. Isaiah Tufanga flying around to the football. Um, and, of course, Quentin Frazier as well. Uh, having those guys playing lights out football, that linebacker core, is going to be really key in the next four weeks that it's coming up uh, for the University of Hawaii football program. Absolutely. I mean, just, just looking at the team sacks, we had seven tackles for loss. And th this one right here I want to I highlight. We had seven quarterback hurries. Um, anytime you can hurry the quarterback out of their, um, their progression and get the ball out of their hand, you're, you're going to do okay as a defense. And, you know, it just speaks to – um, Tuioti from New Mexico, his ability as a quarterback um, to deliver the ball um, pretty quickly because, you know, he, he didn't have any turnovers. It was his backup that came in for him later whenever he was under concussion protocol. But, I mean, our defense is still continuing to supply great pressure at the line of scrimmage um, as opposed to uh, New Mexico only, you know, they had zero quarterback hurries on us and only had one sack. So, Again, kudos to our offensive line. I mean, that, that's a great day um, from the line of scrimmage from our side. Um, and, you know, going forward, I think if we can build off of that momentum on both sides of the ball, we're, we're going to be looking good. 
And and I think too, you mentioned uh, the play of the trenches, and I and I think uh, one of the underrated things that you know sometimes gets overlooked, um, not only from the media but you know ourselves too, because everyone loves the big play, the home run shot, you know, the offensive fireworks. It, you know, everyone loves that, but the trenches is where you know a lot of coaches will tell you that's where the game is won. Uh, the offensive line mm-hmm. I thought did a lot better job of protecting Chevin this week. And then on the defensive front, um, you know, keeping gap integrity. You know, we don't we don't normally do that because most of us guys are offensive guys. So uh, same about gap integrity. But I'll tell you what, one of the things watching the football game, um, I think there's an adjustment that could be made. Uh, one is keeping mm-hmm. that gap integrity. But also, two is I think our linebackers probably feel a little faster because in the first first half, uh, we saw a lot of big runs uh, out of New Mexico mm-hmm. that I think if we yeah. can shore that up and that's what adjustments and, and that's why, you know, I'm excited because of the fact that this is an opportunity, an opportunity to get better than we did. And, you know, we cleaned up throughout the game and, and that is something that's very, very difficult to do in college football is to make sure you get the right adjustments and make those corrections throughout the game. Absolutely. And I think you nailed the um, nail it on the head with New Mexico is a triple option team. Uh, speaking uh, firsthand experience as um, a Hawaii scout team quarterback, every time that I would run scout team for our defense, whenever we played New Mexico, we, we ran the triple option, man. Uh, they, they would put me in there specifically to run that against our defense. And I, I know um, well, I, I can't say that I know for sure, but I, I would bet anything saying that our coaches had our defense practicing against the triple option. And when we come out, you know, in, in this game, and at least in the first half, and we don't see those looks, I mean, th- those guys have been practicing against that. They, they have all of their assignments, all of their calls, specifically to try to combat what they were seeing at practice. And so I, I know there there was miscommunication from a, a player perspective, from players to coaches. Um, great great perseverance from our coaching staff, not getting rattled by that and making adjustments on the fly, just like what you said. And and that's that's the key thing uh, defensively for this football team. Um, keeping in mind that you know with San Diego State coming up, you know we kind of know what that West Coast uh, type of look, and we'll get to that a little bit later too as well. Um, defense is going to be seeing a, a similar look uh, to Wyoming. So gap integrity adjustments are going to be key uh, for this University of Hawaii football team. I want to reshift uh, back to the offense because uh, 505 yards, 410 of them uh, coming in through the air. The run game uh, wasn't as much needed uh, in this one, uh, Hunter. But for me, I think a couple of things that stand out uh, going back offensively is nine receivers touching the football, having awesome. guys being involved in the game, and key guys having big performances as well. Nick Mardner, we've been waiting yep. for him. We, the last time we saw him was that game-winning catch against BYU in the Hawaii Bowl. Having him right. get going, we see how dangerous he can be as an offensive threat for this team as well as Jared Smart, your possession guy. You have Bowens, who can be a deep threat. Rico Bussey as well. I, you look yeah. at when these guys have the ball, we are a very dangerous football team. I look at that game, and one stat comes to mind. It's called Yak, yards after catch. It seemed like every <laughs> time we got our, ball, our guys the ball, it was in space, and we let our playmakers make plays. I mean, I, I, I'm so happy for, for Nick Mardner. Um, you know, just from a, a continuing to keep your head down and working hard, knowing that your time will come. Uh, I was at practice the majority of last year, and this guy, um, not a very loud guy, sticks to himself. Um, but you know, he he was he knew his assignments, he knew where he was supposed to be, nailed his footwork, and when the time came, I mean that that that, that play, you know, that he he caught that little slam and then turned around and brought it back to the outside and put that defender on his on his rear end, man, just put that guy on skate is what we would do. Yes, he did. (laughs) Oh, that, that was just a phenomenal play. Um, I, I'm so stoked for him, uh, finally getting that breakout because he's hard to miss on the field. He's one of our biggest guys. 
He's wearing that Randy Moss 84. Um, I, I'm, just, I'm stoked for him and uh, kind of living up to what he was recruited for a couple years back. I think also two things uh, just kind of adding on this too. Um, uh, for me, I would like to see, and we saw this this past weekend, Calvin Turner is an yep. absolute playmaker. He needs to uh, – He we need to find ways to get him more involved in this offense, whether we see him in the backfield, whether we see him in slot. We saw him take a simple slant route and turn it into a touchdown. He has oh. speed. He has uh, savviness when it comes to running. Um, I'd like to see him touch uh, touch the ball a little bit more on the offensive side. That, that catch and run by Turner was – Whew, uh, th- th- this is steep, but almost Reggie Bush esque, if I can go that Ooh. far. Just just with his ability to stop cutting back. I mean, cutting back into the defense. I mean, y- you had defenders running into each other. Um, I don't know how that that play didn't make it to top ten. I thought that was just absolutely fantastic. Um, and you know, I I think Coach Graham is starting to see. Um, this offense is not going to be kind of your run of the mill run creating the pass like I think he wanted it to. Um, if you look at our stats right here, I mean, we have six different guys running the football and we, we only had 93 yards on the ground. Uh, we, I think we are a pass first offense, then Agreed. leaving way for the run. Um, I, I, I would implore him to be more courageous like he was in this game with the play calling, with allowing our guys to do what they can do. I mean, they proved it. We have nine different guys making plays and Shevin's delivering the football with phenomenal accuracy. I mean, um, with what was his, uh, he was 33 for 43. That that's, that's only 10 balls on the ground or, you know, or something else happened. Uh, Shevin did a, an incredibly great job leading our offense and a lot of guys made plays. I think I think one thing, at least for me offensively, that this University of Hawaii football team could work on, uh, because keep this in mind, the Mountain West Conference um, just came out with their version of the power rankings, having Nevada as number one, mm-hmm. uh, San Jose State as uh, number two. Um, you have San Diego State in the mix, Boise State as well. Hawaii is going to be playing – three of those teams, Uh, you got Nevada, San Jose, uh, San Diego State, all uh, all lined up for you, including Boise State as well. Of course, San Diego State first. But the reason why I bring this to attention, because offensively, the one thing that I can see this team at least improving on, Hunter, is quicker starts. Um, I think Mm. we cannot find ourselves in holes early in the game to, to battle back. I I'm, give credit for the offense making those adjustments and getting out there and making those adjustments and, you know, throwing for those 410 yards. But for me, uh, getting a rhythm early and getting quicker starts is going to be key for this team to be successful moving forward. I, I, I think that's a great call, Mark. Uh, one of the things that we would look to um, the, these last couple of years to, to kind of get some momentum going it's taking those five-yard hitch routes, those five-yard quick outs. Um, I, I, I'm not in the QB room right now or, you know, know what they're telling the receivers, but anytime you your zone look outside on the, uh, the receivers, Coach Roller used to say, take those. Take those free yards. Um, it gets the QB in a nice rhythm. It gets the receivers catching balls in real time, real action, and it gets your team down the field. Even if it's five yards at a time, four, five, six, it just gets the engine of your offense, if you will, starting to turn. And I, I, I think we're, we're going to – you're exactly right. Even though we had nine guys making plays, we have to – you know, we, we've, we've seen it. We have to give our defense enough time between possessions to kind of catch their breath because um, they come out hot, they come out heavy, putting a lot of pressure on the other team. But you need to be rested in order to do that. So I'm looking forward to that too. Hawaii two and one beating New Mexico, uh, 39, 33. Of course, we'll have more coverage, uh, in the show. We'll be talking about our player of the week, which is coming up next. And of course, X's and O's talking a little bit more about San Diego state. That's all coming up next 
on Hawaii Football Weekly with Hunter Hughes. I'm Mark Veneri. We'll step aside for a quick timeout. You're listening to ESPN Honolulu. Cordero from the left hash. Balls for the snap, and Cordero looking and throws it. Got it to Martin. Martin puts a move on. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. He's headed to the end zone. Touchdown, Hawaii. Welcome back to Hawaii Football Weekly with Hunter Hughes. I'm Martin Veneri. Hawaii football all the time. Always a privilege and honor to talk Hawaii football. Hawaii football improving to 2-1 and one on the year, defeating New Mexico 39-33 this week. Uh, coming up will be San Diego State, Saturday kickoff, 11 a.m. Hawaii time. And Hunter, it, it, first off, San Diego State has become like our new, like I just don't, oh, I, San Diego State is just that you new like rival. Them. I, I don't want right. to say it because, you know, I love the Laka Laka family. Um, I wish, yep. of course, <laughs> uh, Cedric and Ronnie, who has played for San Diego State, uh, is still one of the brothers left. Of course, we had uh, Stephen with us at yeah. the University of Hawaii. But San Diego State just I, – I, I get this feeling. I'll never forget this. And it's funny, before we get to our uh, player, uh, player of the week, uh, Hunter, one of my fondest memories – it's not a fond memory – but one of the losses in the 1992 Holiday Bowl uh, season, um, I will never forget. Uh, I was six years old, I believe. And let's see, 92, seven years old. Seven, seven years old, um, I was able to get a field pass with my dad. My dad was always there, you know, watching my brother, whatnot. And uh -huh. I'll never forget uh, Darnay Scott, who played for the, San Diego, uh, for, who played for uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, and a guy by the name of Marshall Falk running for 353 yep. yards against our Rainbows in a 52-28 victory at Jack Murphy Stadium. One of It's not a fond memory, but I always used to be like, oh, my goodness, Marshall Falk is an absolute savage. That was yeah. one, I'll never forget him running down the sideline, and I'm like, man, he's fast. <laughs> Dad, he's uh, fast. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, I mean – you're you're talking about an NFL Hall of Famer right there, yep. um, and yeah, you 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 couldn't have said it better. I mean, I was a teammate with Steven, and every time we played San Diego State, we used to give him a hard time for his brother not staying home and going to San Diego State. Um, I, I love you, you know, I understand it. I love we love family. you guys. We love you guys, man. Um, but yeah, I mean the the years of legendary coach Rocky Long, you know, coaching them. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, San Diego is always extremely disciplined. Um, they play incredibly smart. Um, they don't make a whole lot of mistakes. And they're always, always defensively sound. You're yeah. not going to run up a whole lot of points against those guys. They just um, – they're very well coached. Um, they're very teachable as players. I think they recruit that way. Um, and then offensively, they also don't turn the ball over either. So if there is a weakness, you better jump on it early and try to capitalize as quick as possible. Because San Diego, is, even though they, they, they got beat by San Jose this week, they are a tough, tough opponent. Yeah, and we'll get to that uh, coming up next in our, our next segment as well. Hunter, uh, player of the week goes to a guy. And, you know, I love these type of stories. A guy who is at Azusa Pacific with uh, coach uh, Victor Santa Cruz, uh, a guy, mm -hmm. you know, there's always like, all right, well, are they D1 players? Are they D2 players? He was playing Division II, uh, but Quinton Frazier gets the opportunity uh, as, a, as a standout kind of guy coming from Azusa Pacific, comes to the University of Hawaii with Victor Santa Cruz, and Quinton Frazier has been an immediate impact for this immediate. football team. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he – he he was the leader of our team this last week in terms of getting to the quarterback and making plays happen. I mean, he had two quarterback hurries, um, two and a half tackles for loss, six solo tackles, nine total. And we mentioned it earlier in the show, perhaps one of the most, the more impressive interceptions I've ever seen from, um, j you know, from someone at the collegiate level uh, to be running one direction dive in another direction away from where the inertia of your body is taking you and still hold on to football. Um, it, it was just a phenomenal play. And 
he he is along with uh, Muasal, kind of one of those guys that's becoming one of the leaders on our defense. You, you can see it just with the amount of energy he kind of inspires and how guys kind of play around him. He's becoming um, integral to um, the backbone of our defense. And and one of the things that I love about Quinton Fraser watching him play. Uh, one of the things as a defensive linebacker in that uh, that three three five war dog type of look yeah. that Coach Todd Graham um, plays in, for me that what really really stands out about Quinton Frazier, and this goes back to even game one uh, against Fresno State and even against Wyoming too as well. He plays with so much reckless abandon. Uh, he does not play like a six foot six one one hundred and eighty five pound linebacker. He plays as a, a big linebacker, like a 6'2", 230, running that, you know, quick 4'5", four, 4'4", four, four speed all over the place. And I'm not That's saying right. he has that 4'4", four, 4'5", four, four, speed. But one of the things that I see out of him is that he just does not care about his body. He plays with reckless abandon. And R.J. Hollett says this all the time in our shows. When we're in the sports fix and we talk about this, Hunter, we talk yeah. about football being a violent game. Football yeah. is a violent game. And him coming downhill and not having that fear and playing with that reckless abandon, to me, that really stands out about Quinton Frazier and what he's able to do defensively for this football team. There's a, there's a famous phrase, uh, that the violent take it by force. And, you know, Coach Rolo used to say, too, that this game needs to be played violently and it needs to be played fast. If you're playing at the Division One level, you have got to play fast. And, you know, not being a particularly big guy, uh, Quentin Frazier makes up for it with heart, with effort. Um, I think of Paul Amalu a little bit with the way that he runs around. He, you know, it's, it's a different um, position, obviously, but similar to the way that, you know, Troy would run around and wouldn't care about his body being thrown around. He, he's just, he's playing at the level that deserves to be brought up from division two to division one. So I couldn't be happier for a guy like that. And, and one of the things for me is that in a day and age of, of football, we see a lot of hybrid type of players. Uh, we yeah. see a lot of guys that can hybrid as a linebacker, hybrid as a safety, being able to cover ground, uh, be able to cover in coverage against you know, whether it be slots or outside receivers, also being able to come in and fill a gap when needed. Uh, Quinton Frazier reminds me of that hybrid type of player uh, that a lot of college football teams are looking for, a lot of NFL teams are looking for. And having a hybrid type of player in that in Quinton Frazier allows this defense to be a lot more versatile. And you've seen that with that interception. That's one of the best game ceiling type of interceptions that I have seen personally. Because if you look at it, he actually slipped in coverage. He had good coverage. He slipped, got up, and then dove and made the interception, which, you know what, that's that's not nothing but skill. It is. It takes skill. Don't get me wrong. It does take skill. But that's hard and effort. And some of that thing, some of those things, you just can't teach. Yeah. And I I don't want to go too far down the path of, you know, you know, good things coming to those who deserve it. But w- w- when you see guys like this, the journey, like what, what this guy, you know, has gone through his perseverance, how much work he's gone um, to get him to this point. I mean, it, it, it almost uh, makes sense that he would make a play like that, having been through what he's been through. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited for him. And yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see, uh, you know, what else is to come for this guy. I'm stoked he got to be the second guy to break the rock for our team uh, yes. in the post game. You know, he got to have that, that steel hammer or whatever and smack that rock of uh, the New Mexico Lobos. So, um, yeah, terrific, terrific performance from Quentin Frazier. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see if he can continue it. You want, One of the tough things, Hunter – that I notice, or, you know, at least for me that I see, uh, you know, one of the tough things about a new guy coming into a program with a lot of veterans, because this team, uh, this University of Hawaii football team is a veteran riddled team. There's a lot of guys that have been around for quite some time. 
And he's kind of like the new kid on the block, you know, coming in with Victor Santa Cruz. Can a guy make a transition from Division Two to Division One? And this is a famous line. Like you, you talk about some, we always have these famous lines that we use, but it's cliche-ish. But you know what? I'm going to say it anyway. But this is a guy who's seizing his opportunity, making the mm. most of his opportunity. Because he's probably and, – and I don't know Quinton Frazier personally, but, you know, you know, guys like Division Two sometimes they're being told, hey, well, you're kind of on the cusp. But, hey, I don't know if you can make that, that, that lead to Division One, But that's the thing, the opportunity, hard work, opportunity, making sure you make the most of what's given to you. Um, I see that every play out of Quinton Frazier. That's yeah. one thing that I see out of him. Him and along with uh, Darius Moussao, who was our player of the week last week, it, it just seems like wherever the football is, you'll see Quinton Frazier and you'll see Darius Moussao around the floor. Right. Yeah, you don't you don't see that that typical uh, millennial prima donna college athlete out of these guys. And I, I'm a millennial too. I'll throw myself right in there with them. Um, but typically, the, the 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 college football player today has a lot of ego. Uh, they, they they play for themselves um, for the most part. They're, they're they're more worried about their image. You know what 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 other people think of them. These guys could not be further from that stereotype. These guys play yep. team first, without fear, without really care of what anyone else thinks of them. They're there to play football. They're there to make plays and. Um, for these guys, they're there to earn that 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 um, that jersey and that scholarship that this coaching staff has given them. And and I'll piggyback that and and say this, Hunter. Uh, the one thing about ego, it, it can definitely take you down a hole in a dark, very dark place where sometimes you just can't get out of it, and and it becomes yeah. contagious. It becomes infectious, and. You know, I'm not in the opportunity this year to be on the sidelines to see what's going on in the sidelines. And I saw a Norm Chow football team. I saw three years of Nick Rolovich. Um, I see what my eyes tell me on television because I watch the game yep. and listen to the game at the same time. But I look down on that sideline and I don't see too many finger pointing. I don't see right. a lot of guys um, blaming each other. I see more guys like pushing themselves to get better, uh, to make the next play. Um, and that will make yourself a better football team and also a reflection on their coach because he's always taking accountability in Coach Todd Graham. Um, you see that. And, you know, for me, having that and having no ego and just going out and playing football and having the support of your football team is more important than anything else uh, than wins and losses, for me at least. I couldn't agree anymore. And, you know, I, I saw a little bit of that transfer. Um, I, I can't point to one week or another but when we saw what we had from an offensive standpoint and saw the amount of yards and points that we could put on the board the the, the team really kind of started to come together and 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 coach was not about to let the you know egos get in the way of that you know in some ways I think that's a big reason why the Melky Stovalls were were released last year um I, I'm thankful that he was given another opportunity this year um, and I think that, that that has something to say with the character that a coach like Coach Graham brings to the table. Um, he's able to kind of ride that wave of unity and, and, um, and professionalism and character that I feel has been established in that locker room. And you can see it. It's, it's continuing to uh, um, showcase itself right now. No egos equals more wins. It leads to more team play and just going out there and balling out our player of the week, Quentin Frazier. I'm sure we're going to be calling his name a lot more uh, throughout the season. Coming up next on Hawaii Football Weekly with Hunter Hughes, we'll be talking to X's and O's. Big, 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 and I'll keep saying big, big time matchup with the San Diego State Aztecs. We'll break it down for you. That's coming up next on Hawaii Football Weekly on ESPN, Honolulu. In motion to the near side comes Miles Reed. They're going to fake it to Reed, and again, looking for a deep ball. Have a receiver. Touchdown, Hawaii. Oh, my. Zion Bowens again.
First and 10, Rainbow Warriors at their own 36 yard line. Chevin Cordero from the left hand. Cordero, and now they're coming on his backside. He's throwing, he's got an open receiver. Calvin Turner's got it. Gets away from the man. He's at the 30, 25. He's at the 20, still on his feet. Headed to the end zone. Touchdown, Hawaii. Welcome back to Hawaii Football Weekly with Hunter Hughes. I'm Mark Veneri. Of course, a big-time matchup, and we talked about this in our second segment. Of course, we had a victory against New Mexico, 39-33. Quentin Frazier, our player of the week. Uh, we also touched on this, uh, Hunter. Both of us kind of have this feeling about when we play San Diego State. It, it's just Absolutely. one of those things, you know, the, this team, well-coached. Uh, they play with a lot of physicality. Um but we also have these close games, gritty games, chippy games, if you want to call that as well. Uh, but this is going to be a big matchup because I'm sure San Diego State remembers uh, the West Division Championship game in which Hawaii won 14-11. Uh, yep. You put all of those factors in and in, in the way Hawaii football plays when they play against San Diego State and vice versa. I expect this one to be a close game and a very physical game as well. Absolutely. I, I think with them on our side of the Mountain West, we see them every single year. I, I can't help but have my nose turn up every time I hear of San Diego State. Even, I, ugh, I, I don't like them. I don't like them, Mark. <laughs> um, and, and with that, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm expecting a hard-nosed, gritty football game this Saturday. Um, I think they're going to come out prepared. Um, both of us are two and one. Um, they're coming off a pretty definitive loss against San Jose. Um, and, you know, much like us, they, they still believe, I would say, that they have a lot to prove uh, for the remainder of this season. It's, uh, it's definitely not out. Uh, th th they're not out of the picture just yet. And I think there's no secret on what they're, they're going to be trying to do um, Saturday night, they're going to want to run the football. And San right. Diego State got away from that. I watched a little bit of that San Jose State game. They tried to air it out, and they did not find a lot of success against San Jose State throwing the football, which you can say our weakness, at least on the defensive side, is that run game um, and that rushing attack. Uh, I think we can be a little bit more aggressive defensively if San Diego State's going to want to pound the rock and run the football. Uh, but for me, I think it plays into our strengths if San Diego State's going to want to air it out. Uh, I think that plays more into our strengths uh, defensively. Um, but in terms of San Diego State and what they're going to do, you know they're going to want to pound the rock against this defense. Absolutely. And I, I think it's safer. I, uh, I, I wasn't particularly impressed with San Diego's uh, quarterback and his ability to throw the ball. Uh, he did have some some open looks down the field in that game against San Jose, but just could not find the target. Um, I think, you know, it, it matches up well for them to run the, the football. If I was the OC over there, I'm absolutely running the ball against us and making them, uh, making us, stop them at the line of scrimmage uh, to kind of win the battle up front. So I, I couldn't agree anymore with you on that. Yeah, and I expect uh, it's, not, it's not a question mark. It's an expectation that I feel San Diego State is going to want to control the clock a lot like Wyoming, control the clock and control the ground game and keep this offense in the University of Hawaii football team off the field. Um, because they know that if Shevin gets that early rhythm and gets going offensively, it could be very dangerous for San Diego State to put themselves in a shootout type of game with the University of Hawaii. So um, with San Diego State comes the run game, but also we flip it to the defensive side. We know that San Diego State is typically very aggressive uh, on the defensive side. We see that all the time out of these teams. San Diego State likes to put pressure. Uh, they like to stack the box. They they want to dare you um, to make plays. And yep. that's the thing about San Diego State that makes them such a good defensive team is that they're not scared to make those mistakes. They go out there and hunt. They play with a lot of violence, as we talked about. Um, and yep. for me, 
that's going to be the key offensively for the University of Hawaii football team, Hunter, is how quickly can Hawaii get into their rhythm? Because yep. if Hawaii cannot find that rhythm early, uh, it, it could be a long night for the University of Hawaii football team. Yeah. No, and I think to piggyback off of that, Mark, I think one of our biggest challenges is to take care of the football, both from a time management standpoint, but also just the turnover standpoint. I mean, this last game, we gave up the football three times to New Mexico's one. So, you know, turnover margin, we were negative two right there and somehow managed to win that game. Let me just tell you this right now, that will not be the case against San Diego State. If we lose the turnover margin, we will lose this game 100%. San Diego State is well um, is um, is too well coached. They are too well um, recruited. They're, they're a great football team. They always are. We cannot afford to let the football out of our hands if we have um, the possession. We just can't do it. And I think that kind of leads us right into our our keys to the game, um, Hunter. I'll I'll start off by first, and I think I, I really think that you're going to piggyback off of this. I think once again. We need to see Chevin Cordero in the 35 to 40 range of passing the football. You said this in our first segment, and I will piggyback off of you uh, for this, is Chevin Cordero and this University of Hawaii football offense is a pass-first team. And I think um, J.G. Klein, I think he's starting to understand that. I think Coach Graham is starting to understand that, that this team is meant to spread the wealth from a passing, from a passing standpoint. If we can have the luxury of 300 yards on the ground, hey, great, we'll take it. But first and foremost, pass first, run second. Pass first to actually set up the run and get that quick game going to get Chevin in that uh, rhythm early. That's right. I couldn't agree anymore. And I, I don't think Coach Graham has ever coached a team like this before where, you know, he can confidently let his quarterback go out and have 45 attempts like he did this last week. You know, a lot of coaches that run first and have a defensive mind like Coach Graham does typically look at the pass as a risk where it's actually a tremendous advantage and makes you scary to other teams trying to prepare for you from a defensive standpoint. So stick to what we can do, allow our playmakers to make plays. I mean, we had nine guys catching the football for us this last week. Find guys like Calvin Turner, Nick Marner, Jared Smart, um, Zion Bowens, allow them to make plays and let Shevin spin the football because he's been spinning it really, really well. Yeah, and if he can spin the football, uh, I think it gives a very good chance for this University of Hawaii, Hawaii football team to be successful. And if they can get uh, the receiving core involved, it's, it's going to be scary. I, I really believe that uh, because we saw San Jose State and what they were able to do um, if the replication, I know proof is in the pudding and, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's kind of like the recipe uh, right there. A uh, quick game, get the ball out and, and work fast, work tempo. Uh, I think once he saw that out of the, the University of White football team, it really put New Mexico on skates after that. And, and I think if yeah. Shevin can do that and be comfortable, which I know he can be, and we saw that, it, it makes our it makes our offense a very 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 dangerous potent attack. I, I I couldn't agree anymore. And you know on the the defensive side of the football, I think our linebackers need to continue to be um, aggressive, uh, fill the holes like we know that they can. And uh, I I think if we win that battle up front and stop the run to try to force them to make plays in the air, it's going to be a great day for us because they have not made um, quite as many plays in the air as uh, what, what um, they would need to um, to combat that style of the defense. And I know we talked about this in previous weeks too, Hunter. Um, I think for, for me personally, uh, never mind Shevin. Uh, Shevin's going to do what he does. Our receiving cores, our backers, defensive backs, we, we know what that's going to happen. I think the battle – and the key, the, the number one key, is going to be trenches on both sides of the football. Can San Diego State impose its will in the run game? Can Hawaii fill its gaps, keep that gap integrity? Can the offensive line of the University of Hawaii football team stop the aggression of and that very uh, diverse defense that San Diego State comes out? And I think that all funnels down 
to the trenches, the offensive and defensive line, respectively. Yeah, I, I'm i right there with you, Mark. And looking at our schedule moving forward, you never want to look too far ahead. You have to look at each game for what it is. Um, but looking at this, these next four weeks, it, this could be one of the, the toughest four-week stretches that we've seen as as a school in a long time with, um, you know, San Diego State, Boise State, always hard. And then Nevada and San Jose really rising up and becoming uh, two prolific programs for the Mountain West who have not been that in a long time. It just kind of speaks to this new age of the Mountain West. And um, But again, b- before we go that far, we have to take care of business come this Saturday against San Diego. And and I think these four games is gonna tell a lot about this uh, a lot about this team. With five games remaining, four out of the five are coming against the top teams in the conference, and it's either gonna separate us to be one of the top contenders, or put us potentially in the middle of the pack, or even put us down in the pack. So this is a very very important stretch, and it starts with San Diego State uh, on Saturday. And I think if Hawaii can really I, I think this is going to be a cannibal if Hawaii pulls the victory off in Carson it's not going to be in San Diego in Carson yeah if Hawaii can pull off this victory momentum wise it puts a boost heading into Boise State as well as Nevada and then San Jose State I the chips could fall where they may but this is the most important four game stretch in conference uh, in conference for the University of Hawaii football team that I can remember in quite some time yeah, and I think if we, we go out and we smack San Diego in the mouth and we beat them this week, it proves to us, you know, if not to anyone else, just to us, that we are contenders. Um, you, you can believe that all you want to, but when you beat a, a prolific team like San Diego State in the Mountain West, it proves that we belong. And it proves that we can contend for that Mountain West championship for the second year in a row. And it wasn't just because of the run and shoot. It wasn't because of Cole McDonald. It's because we are Hawaii football and we're here to stay. All right, Hunter, what is your predictions, buddy? I, we've, uh, we're one and one, uh, you and I respectively. Uh, so what's your, yep. what's your, what's your predictions for this weekend's game? Oof, uh, again, I, I think this one's going to be, going to be really tough. It's going to be gritty. I think uh, we're going to kick a last-second field goal uh, to beat them. Uh, I think we're going to win 27-24. Uh, you didn't just say that. That is crazy because I, I – no hype, no telepathy, nothing. I promise you this. No way. I was going to say 27-24. And for, you, my final for everyone score. listening at home, we're, we're doing this over Zoom. So <laughs> I'm telling you, house, I, I'm at my I, house. <laughs> I there, there's not. I didn't even look at Hunter when he said that. I was like, oh my. <laughs> Like we're th- we're right. Uh, I'd stick with you on this. I'm I'm 27, 24. I'm right there with you. Uh, I'm gonna. Yep. Uh, we're gonna go together on this one and and say uh-huh. uh, you know, University of Hawaii football. I don't think field goal. I think Hawaii will have to fend off San Diego State's late push. Mm. But I think um, our defense is gonna be the reason why uh, we win this football game against San Diego State. Right on. Well, uh, we will be a house united coming into Saturday. <laughs> there we go. Go Bows. Uh, of course, Bo. always, always, my friend, um, appreciate your time, Hunter, um, and always a good time on Hawaii Football Weekly. Catch all the action. Uh, you can catch it in demand, of course, on ESPN, or excuse me, on demand, that is, on ESPN Honolulu on Friday. Special thanks to Kule Agbayani. You know, for the last couple weeks, um, Shout you out know, to Kool. She's producing this, so we we got to give her some love. Kule Agbayani producing uh, Hawaii Football Weekly. Uh, we definitely appreciate all the hard work that she we does. Love you, Kool. And, of course, special shout out to uh, Josh Pacheco, who uh, helps with the producing as well for Hawaii Football Weekly. We appreciate all his hard work as well. And, of Thank course, uh, Hunter Hughes, my partner in crime. Good stuff. Well, of course, Hawaii Football Weekly every week. And San Diego State coming up. I can't wait. Hunter can't wait. Uh, of course, go, go Bows. Bows. Go Bows. Big one coming up this weekend. For everyone at ESPN Honolulu, for Hunter Hughes, I'm Mark Veneri. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. Aloha.
It's Cordero headed for the end zone. Touchdown, Hawaii. You've been listening to Hawaii Football Weekly on ESPNHonolulu.com. Check back in every week for a new episode and catch Hawaii football all season long on ESPN Honolulu.